Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to look at De Moivre's theorem, um, which is a precursor to something really cool called Euler's identity, which uh, we will not be looking at in this video. Um, but we're going to look at De Moivre's theorem. We're going to kind of justify it a little bit. We're not going to do a formal proof that requires something called induction, which we're not looking at here. Um, you'll get that later. Uh, but we are going to look at the theorem, and then we're going to use that theorem to determine the complex roots of numbers. So, like, what's the square root of 4? It's 2. Um, and negative 2, 2 being the principal root. Uh, what is the uh, square root of 4i? That's what this lesson's going to try to answer. So, um, with that said, if you want to check this stuff out in the textbook, uh, specifically the Larson textbook, uh, page 512 to 516, uh, but let's go ahead and jump into De Moivre's theorem. So in my previous lesson, we discussed um, the power of the polar form of a complex number. So given a number um, where uh, its um, modulo or its distance from the origin is r and uh, its angle uh, with the polar axis is theta, uh, this describes a point in the complex plane, thus uh, describing a number in the complex plane. Um, and so, what we did was we talked about um, what is R1 cis theta 1 times R2 cis theta 2, and we determined that that was just multiply the um, absolute value and add the angles, which is a really cool, um, powerful uh, use of the polar form. All right, multiplying numbers in polar form is really just multiplication and addition, where with the rectangular form, you have to distribute, and it can get kind of nasty. You get some i squared, you get some i's. Um, this saves us that trouble. All right, so my question to you is, what is r cis theta squared? Right, r cis theta squared. Take a second to calculate that real quick. All right, r cis, that's just going to be r cis theta times r cis theta, the definition of a squaring, multiplying by itself. And then if we do the same thing, we're going to get r squared cis theta plus theta, 2 theta. All right, r cis theta squared is equal to r squared cis 2 theta. All right, we're just applying uh, the rules for multiplying uh, polar form of complex numbers. All right, what is r cis theta 3? All right, a little bit of a calculation later, you would get r cubed cis 3 theta. All right, how about r cis theta to the fourth? All right, this is getting a little bit redundant, all right? But with that said, we have just established what De Moivre's theorem is. De Moivre's theorem. States for all n contained in the positive integers. All right, the natural numbers. I probably should have just written that. All right. R cosine theta plus I sine theta all raised to the N is equal to R to the N cosine N theta plus I sine N theta. Let me get some parentheses in there. How does this help us? Well, um, for starters, uh, it makes life really easy. Let's say I want you to find 1 minus i to the sixth, right? One way to do this would be to write 1 minus i, 1 minus i, 1 minus i. Am I even going to fit all of these? 1 minus i, 1 minus i. And then a 1 minus i, and I could expand this, which sounds miserable. Or I could rewrite 1 minus i in its polar form. So what's its uh, distance from the pole? That's going to be square root 2. And then uh, so 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2. And then the square root of that is the uh, absolute value. And then uh, what's its angle? So 1 comma negative 1 
that's going to be a negative pi over 4 radians. So, uh, all right, I've just converted 1 minus i into its polar form by looking at its uh, distance from the pole and its angle with the pole. And I want to raise this to the sixth. Well, okay, let's do it. All right, this is going to be much easier than doing all of this. All right, what is root 2 to the sixth? Well, that's going to be uh, 2 to the 1 half to the sixth. And then, uh, this is going to be uh, 6 times negative pi over 4. Negative 6 pi over 4. All right? Working with polar makes life easy, and DeMoz theorem is telling us that we can just convert to polar and then uh, raise the power, no, sorry, raise the, uh, the, the magnitude of the number to the uh, power and multiply the angle by the power. All right? So 2 to the 1 half to the 6, that's going to be 2 to the 3, which is 8, and then uh, cis... Uh, that's going to be negative 3 pi over 2. And if I want to convert back to rectangular, that, that's not that bad. Uh, cosine i sine of negative 3 pi over 2. That is going to be, um, ooh, that's just uh, negative i. This is going to be negative 8i. There you go. Oh, wait, sorry. I just did for positive 3 pi over 2. Negative 3 pi over 2 is going to be right here, which is i. So we got a positive 8i there. Sorry, my bad. Right, 8i. So uh, 1 minus i to the 6th is 8i. And I just saved all the trouble of expanding that uh, the 6 iterations of 1 minus i. Don't forget also that uh, this number, what is it saying? It's saying dilate by root 2, rotate negative pi over 4 6 times. So like in essence, it's saying dilate uh, by root 2 6 times. That's going to be a total of 8 and it's uh, saying uh, rotate negative pi over 4 six times. That's going to be a total of negative 3 pi over 2. So uh, Dumas' theorem is kind of literally saying what this number is doing. All right? it's, it's doing this um, geometric operation six times. But apart from just being able to raise numbers to a certain power, it, uh, it also allows us to uh, look at the roots of a number. So what do I mean by that? Let's look at an example. So let's say I have the number 4i, and I want to find the uh, square root of it. I want to find the things that, when squared, give me 4i. All right, forget about principal roots um, and non-principal roots for a second. And j let's just think about what numbers, when squared, give me 4i. In other words, right, given a number, when squared, when is it 4i? We want to solve this equation. And Dumas' theorem is going, going to allow us to do this. Because, actually, let me go ahead and erase this x and put a z, all right? Because z is the common notation for a complex number. What complex number, when squared, gives me 4i? That's what we're trying to figure out. And um, uh, how does Dumas' theorem help us here? Well, z can be written in terms of its uh, radial length from the pole and its angle with the pole. Right? We can rewrite z instead of its, card, its rectangular form in its polar form, r cis theta. So I'm going to go ahead and replace z with r cis theta. And um, I want to figure out uh, when is this number 1 squared gives me 4i. Right. Let's continue. So um, likewise, I'm going to go ahead and turn that 4i into a... Uh, polar form, right? 4i in its polar form, right? So what angle does it make with the polar axis? That's going to be pi over 2, right? Or any multiple of 2 pi k, uh, 2 pi k and let's uh, keep that on the back burner because that's really important. That 2 pi k is um, very, very important. So we have uh, cis pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. It could be pi over 2. It could be 5 pi over 2. It could be, um, what would that be, 9 pi over 2. All right, but then we also have its distance from the pole, which is 4. So, boom, there we go. All right, how does this help? All right, let's proceed. All right, we're, we're trying to solve this equation. Right? If I use De Moivre's theorem, so this is where we use his namesake. All right? R cis theta squared is R squared 
cosine i sine of theta. Oh, sorry, not theta. Let's, see, let's actually use the theorem. 2 theta. Over here we have r cis pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. All right. And then uh, we're pretty much done. All right. We need r to be 4. Sorry, we need r squared to be 4. What r values make that true? r is equal to 2. Right? And then we need uh, cosine i sine 2 theta to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. We need 2 theta to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. DeMoff's theorem is helping us solve this question. All right? What numbers when squared give us 4i? All right? R is equal to 2. Theta is going to be equal to pi over 4. I'm just dividing both sides by 2 plus pi k. All right? Let me go to the next page. The numbers when squared that give us 4i, right? the polar form numbers, when squared, that give us 4 cosine i sine of pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, are, and there's going to be several of them, I'm going to write z is equal to, right? 2, right? r was equal to 2, and theta was pi over 4 plus pi k. Right? So one of them is 2 cosine i sine of pi over 4. And the other one is going to be 2 cosine i sine of pi over 4 plus pi k. That's going to be a 5 pi over 4. Right? What are these two things exactly? Well, let's like equate them to their rectangular form. We're going to have a, uh, a magnitude of 2. Uh, cosine i sine of pi over 4 that's going to be a uh, root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2 so we're going to have root 2 plus i root 2 and down here 5 pi over 4 that's going to be a uh, negative root 2 plus uh, sorry not plus but minus i root 2 right these two things when squared give us 4i these are the square roots I should say that square roots of 4 I All right let's just confirm it All right root 2 plus root 2 I when squared let's just stay in rectangular here um, we need to distribute Right, root 2 times root 2, that's 2. Right? Root 2i times root 2i, that's going to be 2i squared. Right? 2 plus 2i squared, that's going to become 0, by the way. But let's get to that in a second. Root 2i times root 2, that's going to be 2i. And uh, root 2i times root 2i, that's going to be another 2i. And then so the i squared becomes negative 1. 2 plus negative 2, that's 0, plus 4i. And that's 4i. All right, does this work for the other one? Let's just do it real quick. We had negative minus root 2i squared. And I'm going to skip this uh, that intermediate step there. I'm just going to do negative root 2 times negative root 2. That's positive 2. All right, negative root 2i times negative root 2i is going to be positive 2i squared. These are going to go away again. And then, likewise, we're going to get a plus 2i and another plus 2i, and we're going to get 4i. All right, so we have found the two roots of 4i, all right? Root 2 plus i root 2 and negative root 2 minus i root 2. And how did we do that? We used Demois's theorem to figure it out, and we can extend this to more complicated things, like solving complex polynomials. At this point, it'd probably be a good time to take a break if you need it, but um, go ahead and pause the video, grab a snack, come back. Um, I want you guys to, when you return or when you're ready, I want you to find the cube root of 1 plus i. Right? This is a sounds like a complicated question, but if you implement Demois' theorem, 
it really just becomes a addition and and um, multiplication. So uh, go ahead, take a break, or just jump right into it right now, depending on how you feel. Um, I want to figure out what complex number, when cubed, gives me 1 plus i. That's what this boils down to. All right. Um, R cis theta cubed. Um, what is 1 plus i in polar form? That's going to be uh, pi over 4 or any multiple of 2 pi k. And its magnitude is, uh, what's that going to be? Root 2. There we go. All right. So, um, Demois theorem, this is going to be r cubed cosine i sine of 3 theta. Um, and that's going to be equal to root 2 cosine i sine of pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. All right. What is theta? What is r? And we are done. All right, what is theta and what is r? Well, let's just solve that. So r cubed needs to be equal to uh, root 2. Um, so r is going to be the sixth root of 2. And um, 3 theta needs to be equal to pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. All right, so this 2 pi k is what's giving us the other possible angles. All right, divide by 3 you're going to get pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3k. Cool. And then, um, so if I combine these, I will get my uh, three solutions. And I, I want to explain in just one second why there are only three. So let's see, we have 2 to the 1 sixth times uh, cosine pi over 12 plus i sine pi over 12. That's one of our roots. It's called z1. z2 is going to be 2 to the 1 6. That's just the length away from the pole. Cosine pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3. So what is that? Pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3. That is going to be, I need the common denominator, so times 4 times 4. I'm going to get 8 uh, pi and 1 pi, 9 pi over 12, which is 3 pi over 4. And then I'm going to get z3, which is 2 to the 1 sixth cosine. Um, I want to now take 3 pi over 4 and add 2 pi over 3 to it. And uh, what's that going to be? Well, I need a common denominator. So times 3 and 3 over here times 4 and 4. So I'm going to get a, a 12 in the denominator. And I'm going to get a 9 plus 8, which is 17. So 17 pi over 12. Cool. And then if I were to continue, and this is why we stop at three, this is why there are three roots. Um, this is why there are three uh, unique roots to a complex, uh, to the third root of a complex number. Sorry, I lost my words there. Because if I were to continue, right, question mark. If I were to continue, I would get two to the one sixth cosine. Um, what is uh, 17 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3, that is going to be, um, I need a common denominator, so times 4 and times 4. I'm going to have 8 pi here. I'm going to have 17. That's going to be 25 pi over 12. And I want you to tell yourself why this is not unique. This is not a new solution. Right? Why is this Z4 not a new solution? All right, think about it for a second. I'm going to explain in 3, 2, 1. All right, 25 pi over 12 is the same terminal angle as pi over 12. 12 times 2 is 24. This is the same angle as this one. Z1 and Z4 are the same. If I were to add 2 pi over 3 again, I would get Z2. If I were to add again, I would get Z3, and I would have a cycle. Right? These three solutions 
are uh, unique. And any other solution will just be a repetition of one of these three. So that leads me to my uh, uh, one of my final claims of this video, and that is any complex number Z has P distinct Pth roots. All right, what I mean by that is any complex number has two distinct second roots, three distinct cubic roots, four distinct quartic roots. All right, and the P distinct roots are, sorry, writing I's is always a little bit difficult in this program. The P distinct roots of z is equal to r cosine plus i sine cosine theta plus i sine theta right the the p distinct roots of z are given by the following equation which is r cosine theta plus i sine theta to the pth root is equal to r to the 1 divided by p. And this is going to be the principal root, that positive number. We're talking about positive radial distances times cosine of theta plus 2 pi k divided by p plus i sine theta plus 2 pi k divided by p. Look, that's what happened here, right? We turned this into a complex number. It was root 2 cosine i sine of pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And we divided pi over 4 and 2 pi k by 3. The p here, the, we're looking at the third roots. The pth roots are the third roots. And we took the third root of the absolute value as well. right? And that gave us 2 to the 1 6th cosine pi over 12, 2 to the 1 6th cosine of... Uh, 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4 and so on and so forth until we started to repeat ourselves, right? So we used De Moivre's theorem to find the roots of numbers, right? You don't actually explicitly use it every single time, but embedded in solving this problem, where is it? You will use De Moivre's theorem right here. We use De Moivre's theorem right here to find the three cube roots of 1 plus i. If you want to get some extra practice in, um, I encourage you to uh, try to find the find the 3. So here's one for you guys to do. Find the 3 cube roots of negative 8. All right? You know one of them. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. One of them is negative 2. Right? Let's call that Z1. Uh, but what are Z2 and Z3? Negative 8 is a complex number with no imaginary portion. Right? It has three complex roots. What are the other two? Right? And then um, here's another one. Find the two square roots. of 25. Alright, this sounds kind of silly. The two square roots, 5 and negative 5. But um, does De Moivre's theorem help us uh, solve this problem? Um, verify that it also still works for um, positive complex numbers with no imaginary part. So this is uh, two problems here. 
that you can experiment with to verify that Dumov's theorem uh, works uh, for real numbers as well. All right, so we know the answers. Well, we know the answers to number two. We know one of the three answers to number one. Uh, go ahead and try to find these two and uh, verify that these two are, in fact, the two square roots of 25 using Dumov's theorem. With that all said, I have one last thing that I want to do with you guys in this video, and that is solve a complex equation. So we got 2x to the fourth plus 2 plus 2i root 3 is equal to 0. For what values of x is this equation true? Will de Moivre's theorem help us here? So take a second to try to figure this out on your own. All right, pause the video. Take a break if you need it. I'm going to continue. So I'm going to subtract everything to the right-hand side and then divide by 2. So I'm going to get x to the fourth is equal to a negative 1 minus i root 3. Continuing from there, um, life is good when we are in a polar form. So um, we're going to have r cosine i sine of theta to the fourth. All right, we're looking for the polar form of x. And when uh, is it equal to the polar form of this? So what is the polar form of this thing? We got, we got negative 1. We got negative root 3. We're down here. Let me go ahead and draw this triangle. We got a negative 1 here. We have a negative root 3. What is the magnitude here? 1 squared plus root 3 squared is going to be the square root of 4. 2. Cool. So um, our... Uh, Modulo is 2. This angle here is going to be, what is this angle? It's going to be the arc tan of negative root 3 over negative 1, which is actually just positive root 3. Uh, but that's going to give me a first quadrant angle, so I need to add pi to it. So what is that thing? The arctan of root 3, that is going to be pi over 3 plus pi, which is uh, 4 pi over 3. So over here, we got cosine i sine of 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. All right, any multiple of 4 pi over 3 is going to give us a valid number here. And then let's just use Dumov's theorem. All right. Um, there are going to be four answers. I'll do these answers in a magenta-ish color. All right. So our, our final answers are right, uh, the fourth root of two. And that's going to be the case for all four answers. And then cosine I sine of... Um, this angle divided by 4. So that's going to be pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. Sorry, just pi over 3. The, the, the plus 2 pi over 4 k, the plus pi over 2 k is going to give us the other ones. So we got cosine i sine pi over 3. The next one is going to be 5 pi over 6. Then we are going to get 4 pi over 3. And then our last and final answer is going to be 11 pi over 6. All right, and those are our four roots. Right? The, the, the um, modulus of the number, the absolute value of the number, to the fourth uh, root times the angle divided by 4 uh, plus 2 pi over 4 k. They'll get, that gives you your four answers. All right. Um, one thing that's really cool, and this is what I'll close the video with, is if I plot these things, if I plot them in the complex plane, I get a fun little fact, which is, um, so two to the one-fourth, that's going to be roughly 1.2-ish. So here's one, here's one, here's a negative one, here's negative i, one, i, negative one. 
negative i, so 1.2-ish, but with an angle of pi over 3. So in the complex plan, we're going to be 1.2-ish, about right there. All right, this is going to be z1. Our next answer, let me go ahead and give myself a little line segment. Our next answer is going to be at 5 pi over 6 with the same magnitude, so like over here. All right, that's z2. All right, down here, we're going to have our next answer. A little bit bigger than 1, 1.2-ish. 1 that's going to be z3. Then our final answer is going to be over here. That's z4. So what am I talking about real quick? Um, z, this is z1, this is z2, this is z3, and this is z4. All right, so over here. Um, we get, and I, I may have drawn this a little bit uh, dilated, but we get... A little bit off. A square. Right? The solutions to a complex equation is going to make a regular polygon in the complex plane. That's kind of cool. Right? If I had a fifth power polynomial here, I would have had a pentagon set of answers. Why is that the case? Because this angle here is being scaled, or not scaled, but um, you're adding a multiple of four Why is that the case? I'm adding 2 pi divided by the power of the polynomial, in this case 4, pi over 2, 90 degrees. So I'm getting this interior angle of 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 360. And every solution has the same radial length. So you could do a quick geometry proof to show that this will always be a regular polygon. It's kind of cool. Um, the solutions to a uh, complex equation form a regular polygon. Sorry, a regular, yeah, regular polygon in the complex plane. All right, so there you have it. That's what we did here. We did Demov's theorem. We looked at what Demov's theorem was, and then we looked at complex roots using Demov's theorem. All right, we did a lot of algebra, uh, but there were a few times where we had to make um, assumptions using this theorem. So there you have it. Um, we're going to close up complex uh, numbers uh, for pre-calc B here, sadly, but um, go ahead and take the complex analysis class when you are a junior or a senior, uh, when you start taking math electives. Have a good week. See you guys.